Welcome back, guys. Today we'll be taking a look at a Trains Simulator product, Train Z. We'll be taking a look at the Canadian Pacific 2104 Selkirks from KNL Trains. Uh, <coughs> we will be looking at both packs so that uh, I don't have to do two separate videos for what is effectively the same locomotive. But, uh, they are a uh, fair warning right off the bat. I'll try to get my warnings out of the way. Uh, they are two separate packs, not one pack. So you get, uh, pull this up. You'll have one pack, which will come with the freight locomotives, which will come with this here, and then this other version that's got a snowplow in the front. And then there's a separate pack that'll come with the semi-streamlined passenger version along with a stream of passenger cars. So they are two separate packs, not one. But they are the same locomotive, just one with streamlining, one for freight. So right now we're going to look at the, uh, the freight version without the snowplow. And yeah, we'll dive off into it. So these are not new to K and L per se. These are not his newest works, but they're not his oldest either. So um, one can kind of see the uh, the progression in his uh, in their quality in their uh, modeling. It really shows with this locomotive. It looks really really good overall, honestly. Is it up to par with, say, their latest uh, K4 or the PS4s or the Reading a Blue Mountain 462s? Eh, not really. It's not quite that level, but it's also not quite the same level as, say, the really early, uh, uh, the original K4 pack or the... Uh, a lot of his early Pennsylvania products, Pennsylvania Railroad. It's kind of that happy in between, and you can you can definitely see where it where it shows through. So all models will be semi weathered or relatively heavy leather weathered. So like this locomotive, we can see you know it's pretty dirty up on the smoke box. It's pretty dark, pretty bland. Now I'm on the Eagle River, and the Eagle River uh, environmental settings are already relatively dark, but it just kind of goes to enhance the idea that this locomotive is extremely dark. But overall, it is a really good-looking locomotive. Nice crispy leathering with a nice, uh, nice kind of yellow hue instead of a bright yellow as we see in some... Uh, DLCs or products that are, you know, vibrantly clean, but pretty decent. As far as options go, I don't believe there's really any, yeah. It's typical automatic fireman and then high and low beam headlights, that's about it. Whoops, too far. So the bell sound sounds pretty good. No uh, no moving bell. Like I said, this is kind of his uh, in-between, so most of his newer models will come with a uh, moving bell. This one does not. But it does sound really good. And a whistle. It's got a really nice sounding whistle. And is there a secondary? Nope. No secondaries. Really nice sounding whistle. Overall, a really, really good loco locomotive. 
a little bit of a stretch to have a, a full size 2104 on the Eagle River, but you know, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Hear the whistle pretty pretty good distance off, which is nice. Some models you get about here, here. Well, obviously there, but you know, around about here. I know a lot of models the sounds will just completely cut off. Overall, really good sounding, you know. Alright. Let's hop over to the other freight locomotive. Like I said, really the only difference is uh, this one's got a snow plow up on the front which I it's pretty cool I mean unfortunately it does not uh, doesn't move the snow out of the way but truth be told I don't think any uh, train simulator allows that but again oh and with the freight pack you will get a caboose you will get one of these woodside cabooses caboose whatever you want to call it you'll get one of those to go with it looks pretty good but uh yeah to my knowledge that's the only difference same sounds oh well oh, that bell does swing perhaps I'm crazy huh. I'm not okay huh the bell on the normal, or on the non-snow plowed version, does not swing. The bell on the snow plowed version does swing. Okay, well. Duly noted, again, automatic fireman, headlights, high beams. That's about it. Other than that, it's the, pretty much the exact same locomotive. So... And then lastly, we got the passenger version. Which will have this semi-streamlined uh, casing around it, much like the, uh, the Royal Hudson's and the, uh, the Jubilee class. Kind of give that elegant look of speed, albeit these locomotives are not built for high speed services. Most Texas types aren't. Uh, they're typically built for heavy, long distance drags. That's not to say they can't get up and go, but typically these are uh, not built for high speed, so it's kind of entertaining that the... Uh, Canadian Pacific opted to shroud one in a semi-streamlined case. It's rare in Canada to have ever to uh, to see trains get up above uh, 
really 70. Even then, it's kind of pushing it. Mountain railroading is typically relatively slow. Which, I mean, would warrant good use out of the, uh, the 210 fours if you're if you've got a lot of passenger services needing uh, well needing done locomotive will certainly do it but we got these nice little uh, streamlined marker lights now it does do away with the uh, the big blatantly obvious feed water heater up here that is one of the first differences you'll see Another one is the whistle has been moved, so on the freight locomotives, the whistle sits back here in a shroud, while the semi-streamlined has the whistle up here encased with the stack. Our bell still sits in the same place. And we also do away with the sand domes and the steam domes. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I don't know if it means they don't have... Yeah, I don't believe these have sanding capabilities. Yeah, see, here's your sand pipes right here. Since this one doesn't have sand domes, it won't be, uh, they won't be able to use sand for starting. But, being built for passenger services, even with a relatively heavy passenger train. Passenger trains are tip almost always not near as heavy as a freight train of the same length. It's just A, your cars themselves are typically really lightweight and then obviously it's just people that you're putting in there. People and their furnishings versus some like coal. <laughs> Whole string of hoppers here you'd loaded down with coal and it, it would weigh a good deal more but these locomotives wouldn't have needed that that kind of extra starting uh, effort so no, no sand domes but it does give for a really clean elegant look One of those Canadian sing-song whistles. I call them sing-song whistles. They just they they said they've got a nice, almost musical tune to them. It's a really pretty. Whistle the or the bell does move on uh, this model as well. I forgot to mention these really don't have a cab. They have the standard trains uh, steam locomotive cab placement so nothing really special there and then with the with this passenger locomotive pack you'll get a set of uh, passenger cars so some lightweight uh, baggage chair car another baggage and then combo car a different chair car a heavyweight chair car I believe that is it yeah yeah that's it so a heavyweight two separate chair cars a combo and a baggage our headlight on here. Same chuff sounds, same bell, different whistle.
overall just a really good looking locomotive and I do like that they opted to leave this one uh, kind of clean but not perfectly clean so you know our rods and whatnot are still relatively dirty there's some soot and grime on the white walls around the wheels the firebox isn't clean but the streamlining in and of itself is still relatively clean so it makes for a really really good looking locomotive a nice little uh, CP emblem right under the cab here This is one heck of a train to have here at the uh, on the Eagle River, but it's fine for video purposes. It's fine. I believe, now that I think about it, another little fun tidbit, I believe one of these streamlined 2104s remains in preservation today, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, it has never operated in preservation service. Uh, to my knowledge, the only uh, 2104 that has ever operated in preservation is the Texas Pacific 610, but... One of these streamlined models is indeed preserved, so we do get to appreciate the Selkirks. I don't know if any of the freight locomotives were ever preserved at any point. To my knowledge, there weren't any. Wait, I could be wrong. I don't know. But we do have at least one to appreciate today. And it is fairly well taken care of, so maybe one day we get to see some uh, Canadian steam on the road again. Who knows? But that's about it, folks. The uh, Canadian Pacific Selkirks from uh, K&L Trains. That, uh... Not too, too much about him. Uh, these are some of his more ma basic models. They're, uh, I believe, eight dollars a package. So, you know, they they're really not that expensive. And they're really nice to add to your uh, Canadian fleet. Or if you're a reskinner, they're nice for uh, some of your northern routes or something. So, I highly recommend them. Recommend checking them out. You might enjoy it. That'll be it. Until next time, fellas.